what our attempt was with this Wolfson room here was to create an entrance of the show that brings together uh, very literal references with kind of abstract uh, levels of reference. So what you're seeing in the first room is a coming together of some of the understood themes of Alice, language, uh, scale and perspective, and the journey from childhood to adulthood. But you go upstairs then really to see the birth of the book. Where does this artwork come from? Well, it was our idea to show really how this kind of masterpiece of literature was created. So we uh, brought together as much material on its publication and creation as we could. So what we have is original preliminary drawings by, by Dodgson that he made even before uh, writing the book or in the process of writing the manuscript. Uh, but we also have a lot of material around the publication of the book. We have the first photograph that Lewis Carroll took of the young Alice Little, I guess when she was four. We really wanted to show that the aesthetic that he used in his photographs are influenced by the aesthetic of that very time. So it was our aim to bring these two different uh, means of artistic expression uh, together, uh, which of, is of course a challenge because photography and painting have a very different quality and also presence in space. What you find with surrealism is Alice starts to morph, she starts to change. So those original illustrations by John Tenniel and uh, indeed the original uh, imaginations of Alice, they start to transform into something else. And there's an extraordinary work called Alice in 1941 by Max Ernst. And it's an incredible painting where you have a figure of a very elegant woman being held up, being almost cradled by nature, being thrust into the front of the, of the image. We've kind of come through the 60s and 70s where artists were using Alice as a kind of prism to look through their, their social experience at that time. And now we're in like the 80s and 90s, what is often described as a postmodern moment where things begin to be recycled. This idea of glass or mirroring or reflective surfaces permeate the entire exhibition. And here we are in Dan Graham's pavilion. And again, this mirroring, the reflected surfaces what happens when you look at yourself in the mirror? What happens to your reality when you hold up that mirror? Whilst we were putting together the exhibition, which is broadly chronological, that some of the same motifs or metaphors reappear time and time again. 